You have to bear with me. I must admit I have never um, lectured or talked in an environment like this. I'm quite used to, um, as we said before, cow sheds, workshops, building sites, all that sort of thing. A little bit quickly about myself. Um, it's, you've got a bit in front there that uh, says a bit about myself. But uh, recently, I say four years ago, I returned from Western Australia. I'd been over there basically working with, uh, within the industry from apprentices right through to architects. Um, I've, I'm a self-taught, I did my qualifications as a, a joiner and carpenter, but I'm a self-taught mathematician, I put it, um, and have picked up lots of different things along the way. And um, I've recently done my NCAL last year, and I'm currently studying my diploma in education, uh, numeracy and literacy here. So I'm learning the other end now, I'm learning how the nuts and bolts behind the, the <coughs> theories behind the actual practical part. So I just wanted to share with you today Basically some uh, things that Bob, how Bob builds things, because we come across quite a few Bobs in my way. They don't actually know the, the formulas or the um, equations in their, art, in their head, but they know how to do it with hands-on. So, where are we going here? We go, uh, when I spoke last to Bob, maths and numeracy to him, he didn't know what the difference between maths and numeracy was. And it's a sticky one for people, but Bob's decided these days that maths for him is the actual plans, the specifications, the, um, the how to do it, and then his, his numeracy is actually his bag of tools, his, his builder's belt, his um, wood, his materials. So I, I use that analogy when I'm talking to people like Bob, that that is the difference for, for me and Bob between the two. So it seems to make sense, but anyway. Um, there's another thing that Bob just recently learned. He, he um, knows, we were talking to him about GST, and at the moment that's quite a big thing for him because he does a job, and at the end of the day he doesn't know how much to charge or how not to charge. But he, he came up, because Bob thinks like this, he's, he came up with this other little thing the other day called Mazda 323. Now that's his way of learning. You say to him, what's the GST component of, of, um, of this job? And he said, I don't know, but that M stands for multiply or times, and then 3 divided by 23. So Bob has these little things in his head all the time that he says, like Mazda 323 is his little way of remembering. He frees his mind of, um, of the formulas and uh, the worries, because the formulas can be written on as simple as a little, on the back of his um, toolbox. You know, you can have the formula for the run of a roof or the how to find the square. Like if I said to Bob, please can you use Pythagoras theorem to set out your building, you know, to find if that's 90 degrees there. You know, the, if somebody said to me or Bob, how do you find that? He wouldn't know how to use Pythagoras, but he knows how to use the three, four, and the five method. So if that one there and there is out of whack, it won't equal five. Does that sort of make sense to people? But to Bob, Pythagoras never knew, he never knew Pythagoras, so it's, it's ways of doing it like that. And the ways of measuring the three can be as simple as having a string line with the three, anything, three nail lengths, three um, pen lengths, anything, three that way, five that way, and five, uh, Sorry, three there, then the four that way, one more up, and then the five. Does that sort of make sense? Yeah. And then again, Bob's been told by the architect he must put diner bolts, which are bolts to hold down the bottom, in eighths along there. And if he used his tape measure, he wouldn't know how to find eighths. He can't do maths. So he just divides his length right along there into one. That's halves, we know that quarters, and then eights. And he'll physically go along and do that. He'll mark it like that. Another one, another one, another one, like that. So another thing that Bob has in his head is measure twice, cut once. We all have sort of heard that saying before. But what happens if Bob's measuring it twice wrong? You know, how can he check him? Because the buzzword nowadays is to use a calculator with reasonableness. Now, what does reasonableness mean? You know, it's a bit of a sticky one. But for Bob, reasonableness is he double-checks himself or cross-checks himself. 
So say he wants to find halfway of oh, this piece of wood, many ways, you know, we know, 770 millimetres. Oh, I don't really know that. I've got to find it quickly. I just fold my tape in half. There's half there. Or come in, okay, 770. Oh, I know 350, so I'll come in there and I'll make a mark. And I'll come in there and make a mark. And then I've only got that little bit there to deal with and I can find halfway. So there's other ways. Now this is relating to learners from one to four or whatever. Another way is just balancing. You know, you don't, you, you might spend a little bit of time, but you're on a roof, you haven't found, you haven't got your ruler or your pencil there. You just balance it till you find halfway. So that's his reasonableness. When he's punched into his calculator 740, and it comes back 370. How does he know that? He knows that he can cross-check. So that's his reasonableness.